Among the 12 contestants who fought for the prestigious title and position of executive chef at the Red Rock Resort Spa and Casino in Las Vegas, it was Heather West who rightfully cinched the win. But where does that leave the others? Turns out, fan favorite Keith Green, aka K Grease, will always be remembered as a fantastic chef by fans of the show. Keith ranked in third place in the second season of the show. Although a lot of you may remember him as a rude guy, I don't think he really meant it. I mean, Hell's Kitchen can drive anyone up the wall, and Keith was no different. His folks back in Southampton Village, Long Island, remember him as a real stand-up guy, always putting others first. A true friend, family man, and incredibly devoted to his craft. I mean, who else could churn out dishes like this? Keith. Yes, chef. That Wellington's cooked perfectly. Thanks, chef. What's more, Keith saved the blue team more than one time, thanks to his exceptional leadership skills. There was just one mantra he followed on the show. Pull my pants up, keep my mouth shut, and cook. Agris is gonna kill at this service. He's gonna fly around the kitchen like a maniac, pumping out money food. You heard? And boy, did he live up to it. How long for that oyster special? Two minutes, chef. Thank you, Keith. Although his exit wasn't exactly memorable, Keith continued his culinary journey long after the show. Unfortunately, that journey was cut short. He passed away after drowning on August 15th, 2012. He was only 35 years old and had a loving family, a wife and two young children. According to Newsday, his body was found around 11 a.m. that day by a couple who were walking along the shore near Wyandanch Lane Beach in the Hamptons. It's heartbreaking to know that just two hours before his body was discovered, he had spoken to a police officer, mentioning that he was all right, just swimming and enjoying the water. But before his story was cut short, Keith Green went on to work alongside fellow contestant Heather at JLX. Remember when he said this? I think if it's me and you in the final, in final two, Perfect because there's an H and then a fork and then a K. Yeah, they were the perfect combination of H and K. It's great to see that Keith and Heather's bond didn't end with the show, as they continued to support each other throughout their culinary careers. I mean, Keith was always on top of his skills, and, well, he had made quite a few plans for himself. I've been playing in my restaurant since I was a little kid, you know, that's what I'm here for. And you know what? Keith's journey in the culinary world didn't stop there. He eventually became the executive chef at Schmidt's Food Market. This morning, we knew something was wrong because he didn't show up for work. And he never misses work, said owner Dennis Schmidt, trying to process the news of his untimely death. The whole family worked at the food market together. Keith's wife Kristen as a bookkeeper and his mom Marge as an assistant manager. Daniel Schmidt shared that for the last 12 or 14 years, Keith had been clean and sober. There was a time when he faced some tough challenges, spent a couple of years in a difficult place, but he managed to pull himself out of it. It's truly incredible to see how far he came and the strength he showed to overcome those obstacles. Now, among other things, Chef Keith was famous for this wild confession. Why'd you have to be so fing rude? Cut, you're rude to me all the time. Well, do you agree with him? Though, before I move on to the next, here's a quick look at one of my favorite moments featuring this fantastic chef. That makes you want to dive in there and eat it. Thanks, chef. Rest in peace, Chef Keith. I hope your family's doing okay. Anyway, it's now time to take a look at what Chef Virginia, the runner-up of the season, is up to now. The multi-talented chef went on to work at some top-notch places, like Lupa Asteria Romana and Casa Mono, putting her culinary skills to good use. But Virginia didn't stop there. She's a total rock star in the restaurant game. She went on to open her very own spot called Cork and Pig Tavern in San Angelo. And let me tell you, it gets rave reviews. Her empire continues to grow, and she now owns more than five restaurants. Looks like Gal's trying to follow in Ramsey's footsteps. In 2019, she even made an appearance on the Food Network's Bite Club. She's truly rubbing shoulders with the big shots in the culinary world. I gotta say, Virginia's journey from Hell's Kitchen to becoming a restaurant mogul is seriously impressive. She's living the dream and showing everyone that hard work and passion pay off big time. Not only is Virginia rocking it in the restaurant scene, but she's also kicking ass in her personal life. 
When she's not busy running her successful restaurants and making waves in the food world, she's enjoying fantastic vacations with her loving husband and adorable kid. Way to manage both your business and your home with style. You go, Virginia. But hey, it looks like someone else scored real big when she landed a position as a personal tour chef for a major celebrity. I'm talking about Sarah Horowitz. And yep, she was Justin Bieber's personal tour chef. However, her life would change during one fateful car ride. According to legal documents, Sarah had a bit of a mishap with a cooler filled with food, making quite a mess inside a car. This incident seemingly triggered a heated argument between her and her boyfriend, Mark Mathis, a TV weatherman from El Paso. As the argument escalated, Sarah allegedly resorted to violence. She reportedly punched and kicked Mark, damaging his glasses and scratching his face. Sarah was arrested on April 10th, 2013, on charges of assaults and domestic violence. The next day, she was officially charged with a misdemeanor. It's a shame that her success story came crashing down around her like that. After Hell's Kitchen, she revealed that the editing of the show had a significant impact on her public image, with Ramsey even calling her some really degrading stuff. People were very angry at me, she confessed. I have been trying to resurrect my professional image since. Since then, she's been working towards that goal, making appearances to showcase her barbecue skills on The Food Network and The Cosby Show. However, even amidst her efforts to rebuild her reputation, it seems she encountered more challenges. She mentioned that Gordon Ramsay initially added her as a friend on Facebook, but later unfriended her. And clearly, she was disappointed. Remember how Chef Ramsay called her this? Missy, Missy, come here, you fat mouth little stupid bitch. The British tabloid The Sun even questioned whether Ramsey's restaurant, Fat Cow in LA, was named as a tribute to Sarah Horowitz, given the history of the insult. Although Ramsey's spokesperson denied any connection to Sarah or the insult, the fact that he had used such derogatory language in the past only adds fuel to the fire. But if you're wondering what happened to the Fat Cow restaurant, well, here's the latest scoop on that. Apparently, Ramsey faced legal issues with one of his business associates from the restaurant. Rowan Siebel sued him for a staggering $10 million, alleging mismanagement and financial problems. Ramsey's team defended themselves, claiming that Siebel and his team were responsible for the day-to-day -day operations and had mismanaged the restaurant, leading to various issues. Additionally, there were claims from contractors and employees of the Fat Cow restaurant who alleged that they were not paid what they they were owed. Contractors filed suits for unpaid bills, and employees filed a class action lawsuit, accusing the restaurant of failing to pay them minimum wage and overtime, along with other labor violations. As for Sarah, the latest I've heard is that she tours restaurants for various catering events. Well, at least she's still passionate about cooking. But if I remember right, Sarah wasn't the only contestant to be called fat that season. The sack of f***ing Yankee Danky doodle shite. That's Garrett Tell for ya. His journey is certainly one filled with ups and downs. He came into the show as an executive chef with a unique background of learning to cook while in prison. He took on the challenge of competing in Hell's Kitchen's second season. Unfortunately, in the seventh episode of the season, Garrett faced a tough elimination after serving raw chicken. The fact of the matter is that the chicken went out there undercooked and now I'm uh, leaving. While it was definitely a setback, he didn't let it define him. After his time on Hell's Kitchen, Garrett continued to pursue his passion for cooking. In addition to that, he ventured into the world of short film production, exploring other creative avenues. In 2013, he put together a 35-event food tour from September through December with a rather intriguing theme, tailgating. Unfortunately, he has also faced legal issues in the years following the show. In 2012 and 2013, he was arrested for driving without a license, and then two more times in 2016 for the same offense. Hopefully, he's found support and understanding as he navigates through life's trials and strives to move forward. Now, let's talk about the winner of the season, Chef Heather West, who is clearly doing a fantastic job balancing her life as a mom and as a chef. If you follow her on Instagram, you know how enjoyable and inspiring she is to watch. She's even been posting some super hilarious reels. And what's more, she's also been documenting her weight loss journey. 
Damn, that's impressive. You can also follow her on Twitter, or X now, I guess, where she describes herself as co-founder of nonprofit East End Playdates, chef, wife, mommy, was on that show with that guy a very long time ago. Well, that's certainly a unique way to describe Gordon. You know, as the season went on, Heather really stood out more and more in the kitchen. She had it all, confidence, consistency, and that friendly vibe that made everyone root for her. Remember this time when she was barking orders to her teammates despite serious burns on her hands? There's quail in the oven, Marianne. Uh, two extra quails, not orders, just extra quail. Only someone with deep passion and determination can pull that off. And Heather was bursting with both of them. But you know what? Life doesn't always hand out the perfect prize package, even when you win on a show like Hell's Kitchen. After her victory, Heather didn't land an executive chef gig like you'd expect. Nope, she got offered a senior chef position at Terra Rossa in Las Vegas instead, with a 250k salary. From there, her culinary adventure took her across the country from Washington to North Carolina, and then she found herself in California, finally rocking the role of head chef at Monterey's Jellyfish Restaurant and Broadway Grill. She eventually made her way back home to Port Jefferson, New York, where she met her future husband. Now, she's a proud mom of three kids, but... You know, it hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows for her. She's bravely opened up about her struggles with postpartum depression on social media. And that's not an easy thing to do, let me tell you. Along with giving birth to her three children, she's faced the heartache of three miscarriages and a stillbirth in the past decade. Our first loss was our daughter Haley, she confesses. That's an unimaginable weight to carry. By speaking candidly about her emotions and experiences, Heather has become an advocate for postpartum depression awareness, offering a beacon of hope to others facing similar battles. She says that she believes she has seven kids, three here and four in heaven. Amen, chef. Her willingness to embrace vulnerability and turn her pain into a source of strength and support is truly inspiring. Heather's journey stands as a testament to the power of empathy and the transformative effect of using personal challenges to uplift and empower others. Even before getting on the show, Heather was already facing some real big challenges. In a candid interview with Pride magazine, Chef Heather spoke about the profound impact of losing the first woman she ever fell in love with. Well, right before the final stages of casting, they fly you out to LA to see if you can handle the situation. And you go through a set of interviews, and they bring it down to about 50 people. You only see the other people for a second, and you're not really allowed to talk to each other. For example, you can't exchange names or any personal information at all. But as soon as I walked in, I saw this girl, and she was my very first love at first sight experience. She was sitting there at the table, and I just knew right away. Any guesses as to who she might have been referring to? Well, it was none other than Chef Rachel Brown, who ranked in seventh place that season. You see, suicide is a devastating issue that claims more lives than AIDS, cancer, heart disease, or liver disease. Tragically, Rachel, may she rest in peace, died by suicide in May 2007. Both men and women from ages 15 to 44 can fall victim to it, a figure that surpasses the toll of war. It's also second only to accidental deaths among young people. Behind these cold statistics lies an ocean of human suffering. Each life represents an immense personal loss, leaving behind a void that impacts those who are left behind. Coming back to the interview, the reporter raised a curious question asking Chef Heather if she and Rachel were together during the filming of the show. Heather candidly responded, Oh, no, not at all. There is actually a no fraternization clause in the contract. Not that you even would or could or would have the time if you wanted to. They literally have you for 20 hours a day. Heather's heartfelt revelation during the interview touched on a deeply emotional chapter in her life. She shared, We were in touch. I didn't know it during the show, but while we were filming, she was already with someone. We talked after the show wrapped. We talked about spending our lives together and things like that. But some things got in the way, and we just ended up being friends. And then she actually passed away on May 9th, 2007. The finale aired on August 14th, 2006, and she passed away less than a year later. I didn't vocalize what I should have. I didn't fight for her like I should have. So I have tons of regrets. Tons. That regret for both what she thought she could have said or done, compounded with the feeling she never had a chance to share, definitely has to weigh on you. She continued, 
After she passed, I had her name tattooed on my ribs. She was my life. I loved her more than anything. Thank you, Chef, for sharing this with the world. Life is too short. Always tell the people in your life you love them and how much they mean to you, right? With that, let's pivot towards something a little more lighthearted. My strategy, it kind of failed on me, but my strategy was to keep to myself and do what I have to do and not trust anyone. That's Chef Maribel Miller, sharing her game strategy while she was on the show. She also had some great insight onto what Gordon Ramsay is like outside the show. Uh, outside the kitchen, he was uh, funny, he liked to make jokes. Um, always smiling, um, very friendly. He used to stare at me way too much. It was uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like him. Oh, and not to mention, some of the other female chefs apparently had a crush on him during the filming. Meanwhile, Virginia and all the other girls are like, you know, like throwing themselves. <laughs> like, oh, Gordon, oh, oh. Calm down, y'all, he's married. Now, she may have not made it to the end of the competition, but Gordon Ramsay himself praised her positive attitude towards cooking. After her time on Hell's Kitchen, Maribel took her creativity to new heights and became a novelty cake decorator at Nibbles Cakes in Delaware. I bet her cakes are as delightful as her positive energy. Next up, Chef Gabriel Gabe Gagliardi followed his passion for barbecue after Hell's Kitchen. He opened the Boar's Nest in Seattle, serving up some finger-looking good barbecue that has people coming back for more. Not only did he conquer the restaurant scene, but he's also offering catering services. Boar's Nest barbecue sauces are now available throughout the US, so order some and drop your reviews here. Chef Giacomo Alfieri shared that after his elimination, he was given a condo, a daily stipend, and had a handler who drove him around. Basically, contestants are free to do whatever they want, till they come back for the final service. Basically, you can do whatever you want. You can go to Disney World. I was eating up as many Italian restaurants as I could. I was trying to, you know, I, I, we're, we're obsessed with, with, with other Italian restaurants as well. After filming ended, he went back to his family's restaurant, Saviano's. Now, he's the proud owner and head chef taking charge of the kitchen with his culinary expertise. Not only that, but he's also an impressive property investor. He married Ashley in 2013, and they have a little princess named Gemma. How sweet is that? They're now living the dream in Dallas, cooking up a storm together. Next, we have Paula Polly Holiday, a skilled caterer from Ben Franklin, Texas. She may have faced a bumpy ride on the show, getting eliminated in the first episode for some Zoto mishaps and not fully showcasing her passion for cooking. But don't worry, she bounced back and returned to her catering roots after the show. Not only that, but she took her love for food online, becoming a food blogger for a while. Did any of you follow her blogs? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Last, but not least, You're cooking in a burnt pan, you f***ing dick! You're gonna blow fire in your face, you f***ing donkey! Well, who do you think Chef Ramsay said this to? Well, it was none other than Tom Pauly, who rebranded himself as Tom Pulley and took his experiences on the show to the next level. He has become a sought after guest speaker at events, where he shares his incredible journey as a chef and his time on Hell's Kitchen. Impressive, right? Anyway, one thing's for sure. He sure was entertaining. I mean, how many chefs do you think would be able to do this right under Chef Ramsay's nose? Yep. That's my man Tom Poley for ya. Now, I'm gonna keep my eyes out for the latest scoops and updates from our favorite contestants, but if you think I missed something, don't forget to sound off in the comments and join me on my channel's Discord server. We can continue this discussion and more there for free. And for those of you who want a little extra, I've got an exclusive server just for you. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier.